Hello, in this video I'm going to look at the lerp function, the lerp function in processing and p5.js. I'll do it in both environments. What is the lerp function by the way? Lerp is kind of a weird word. It stands for linear interpolation, which might make you want to stop watching this video immediately now that I said linear interpolation, but, but stay here because I think there's a reason why you might want to use this. So I've seen this question come up multiple times this week. If you have, let's say you're doing computer vision tracking and you're trying to color track and the, the thing you're tracking is like jumping around a lot or you're getting a sensor reading and there's a lot of noise on the sensor. So one of the things you can use LERP or linear interpolation for is easing or smoothing out a value. So let's, I'm gonna build an example in a second, but let's just look at the LERP function uh, on the whiteboard over here. So the LERP function requires three arguments. The first argument is one particular value. I'll call it val1. The second argument is another particular value. Call it val2. And the third argument is essentially, you could think of it as a percentage. Some value between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. So if, if value 1, let's make an easy scenario, happens to have the value 0, and value 2 happens to have the value 100, and you put in 0 0.3 here, and you say uh, float val equals, val will have the value, say it in your head because you probably can figure it out, uh, 30. Because 30 is 0.3 or 30% along the way between 0 and 100. So the math actually to do that is quite simple. It's a, you know, <laughs> It's multiply, I was, gonna, I was just gonna go through it and then I was like, ah, oh, but I wanted to make this video short, what's going on? But you can think about how you might get a percentage in between a beginning and a starting point. Uh, maybe I'll just include the actual code for doing that in the, in the description below. But what you're here really is for to use this particular LERP function. So how is this relevant? Um, okay, so, uh, oh, no eraser here. So let's think about how this might be relevant. Let's say, that you, okay, so first of all, I'm gonna do a physical demonstration. One of the reasons you might wanna use it is, is to get rid of teleportation in your code, right? So let's say, I know that sounds weird, but bear with me for a second. Let's say you have a target, target x, and you have your own thing at variable x, and you want your thing that's at variable x to go to the target. Well, you could say x equals target x, and the next time you draw it at x, it will be at the target. That's teleportation, right? This thing went all the way there. But what if I wanted to ni smoothly, nicely ease its way on over there? So instead of me right here physically tel teleporting to this wall, <laughs> I could go halfway each time. I could go 50% and then 50% and then 50%. Or I could go 10%, 10% and 10% and 10%. And if I'm doing that 60 frames per second, we're going to see a nice easing motion that's going to get rid of this teleportation problem. So let's build that into this example here and see how that works. So I have a processing sketch with nothing in it. And I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to say float x equals 0. And I'm going to say float target equals uh, 300. And then what I want to do is I want to draw an ellipse at target, uh, some y. I mean, it's just, I should probably do this with x and y, but let's be really simple about this and do it with only x. You, as your exercise, you can put the y in. Uh, so I'm going to make the target a nice, uh, some sort of arbitrary purplish color. And then I'm also going to draw my actual thing x. And uh, it's also, it's going to have uh, some other color. So let's run this code right now. And I want to be, be able to see it all here. So run this code. You can see, oh, no, they're too small. Sorry, let's make them much bigger. So we can see I have uh, circle X, which is this like bluish color. It should make it brighter. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but just... <laughs> You can see it, I'll say stroke uh, 255 for both of them. Okay, so I have the circle X, which is the purple one, and target, X, sorry, X, which is the purple one, and target, which is the pink one. So I could do teleportation, right? I could say X equals target. And when I run it, it's instantly at that target. And, or I could say, instead, now I could do what I've been wanting to do. Oh, you can't see what I'm typing, how terrible. Let's do this at the top of draw. 
right? x equals target. This would be just setting the value x literally to target. Now instead, I could say x equals lerp to the target, oh, between x and the target. So unlike what I kind of showed you over on, the, on the, the whiteboard where I had sort of two values, lerp, finding a lerp between them to set to a new value, I'm just having x continuously interpolate between itself and the target. So what I want x to do is go just 10% of the way along the target. Now, did I get that backwards? So let's just run it and we'll find out if I got it backwards. I don't think I got it backwards. Did you see that nice easing motion? Um, what I meant by getting it backwards is what happens if I put 0.9 in here? Well, 0.9 is not going 90% of the way there at 60 frames per second. It's almost as if you're teleporting there instantly. And I could further emphasize this by saying 0.01, and you can see this sort of smooth motion of it moving towards that particular target. Now, um, I have this desire to add a little bit of alpha to these and then do something else, which is to say any time now I click the mouse, why don't I give the target equal to a, a, the new mouse value? So now you can see, uh, and let's make it a little bit faster, uh, 0.06, sort of arbitrary, but you can see now if I click the mouse, you can see that the one particular uh, circle is going directly to the spot, and the other particular circle is not going directly to the spot. So this A is showing you how you can have some nice easing motion. How can you use this same technique now to smooth out sort of a sensor reading that has noisy values? So um, I'm going to save this, and I'm going to do save as lerp example 2. And I'm going to uh, basically do the same thing here. I'm going to take out mouse x, and I don't need target to be a global variable anymore. What I want to do is say, though, that uh, target is mouse x plus some random value. What I'm trying to do now is simulate, I already have the solution in there, sorry. What I'm trying to do now is simulate a noisy value. So you can see this particular, and, and maybe I need to make, maybe I need to zoom in a little bit so you can see. You can see how much noise is on there, and I could actually make it a little bit more extreme by saying like negative 15. I'm just adding some noise to the mouse. So you can see this might be the kind of values you're getting from a sensor might be something like this. So now you can see that if, the, and, and let's call this like sensor, and now let's call uh, this instead of x, I'll call it smoothed sensor, because I need a really long variable name for no good reason. So I could say, now lerp, now I'm making this like totally awkward here, but this is gonna work, smooth sensor. Um, now I could say lerp, from the smooth value with the actual noisy value by 0.06. And in this case, I actually might want to use a kind of higher value because I don't want to have this, like, I don't want it to be lagging so far behind, but I just want to kind of lose that noise. So, and now, of course, I need to draw the, whoops, I need to draw the uh, actual sensor value. I don't know, this is silly that I'm changing the variable names for no reason and making this more comp. <laughs> My, like, I, something is going on with my keyboard, and all this, like, weird stuff is happening with copy-paste. Ah. Okay, I'm going to have to look into that. So now we should be able to see, uh, uh, oh, and I didn't have a value in here. That would help. If it's zero, obviously, it's not going to do anything. So let's make it point 0.2 again. And you can see now how the purple dot, if we zoom in here, how the purple dot is actually moving quite smoothly but the noise is on the red one. So that just that little bit of lerp. Now I could, if I move really fast, you can see it lags a little bit behind. And this is you, just about you kind of tweaking values and playing around. So hopefully this gives you a sense of what the definition of the lerp function is, how it works, and a couple scenarios where you can use it. And if you have questions, uh, please add them in the comments. Oh, I said I was gonna do this in P5. So just to show you that this exact same thing, I could take this exact code. I'm gonna open up P5.js. I'm going to paste it in, and I'm just going to change this to var. I'm going to change this to function. I'm going to change this, whoops, to uh, create canvas. I'll change this to function. I'll change this to var. Whoops, change this to var. And I think now I have this exact same program working in P5.js. So you can see here the lerp function exists across both environments, and there's just a few syntax differences, the most notable being variables are not typed. So in P5, which is JavaScript, you just say var instead of float. Uh, functions don't need a return type specified, so instead of void setup, function setup. And then uh, instead of size, the function in P5, I guess I didn't set the font size in advance, 
is uh, create canvas. So hopefully now you've seen how Lerp works, a couple scenarios where you could use it in both processing and P5. Okay, thanks very much and see you in the next video someday.